good afternoon guys hope you are able to hear me can i get the confirmation okay guys are you able to hear me okay fine thank you very much so we'll get started so thanks for joining the webinar on blockchain so myself uh, ragu prasad kodandu i'm the subject expert matter with skill up right and uh, i'm going to start the session now let us start with the agenda let me share my screen can i get the confirmation whether you are able to see my screen the notepad okay fine thank you very much <clears throat> so everything is set and again thanks uh, one more time for joining today's session so let us look at the agenda for the today's session so in this session we will be discussing about what is a blockchain applications of blockchain which are all the different implementations or who are all the adopters or which are all the adaptations of the blockchain blockchain architecture blockchain ecosystem and if you want to start developing a blockchain what are the things you need to set up and what are the things you need to learn and then the learning path what is the learning path and finally just i would show you one demonstration of a use case of a blockchain which is called as the marketplace so this is the pretty much agenda for today's session so let me get started with a brief introduction about me so myself ragu prasad kondur i am the subject expert matter with skill up right skill up right every month so they will come up with uh, webinars on different topics so in this month starting with we have the webinar on the blockchain okay so i have done my b and ms and uh, i have overall 27 years of experience before getting into it i was a lecturer in engineering college i am into it from last 20 years i worked with various companies like cisco csc icic group of companies so currently i am into corporate training um, and uh, as part of it i provide training on various technologies so pretty much on different technologies so blockchain is one of the technology and uh, we have a lot of corporate customers as well as the academic customer and nowadays there is a lot of buzz about the blockchain so what exactly is a blockchain it is nothing but a ledger we call it as a ledger right suppose a uh, whenever probably everyone would be having a ledger in our house only so earlier days we used to write any credit and any debit suppose if i buy something or if we get some money from someone so we used to write in a sheet of paper so later on we used excel sheet to record those transactions nowadays there are different apps available where we would be recording any information related to any transactions right so blockchain is a system of recording information in a way that makes it difficult or impossible to change hack or cheat the system so this is the additional things other than that we used to record the information in the form of a ledger so we call it as a distributed ledger or a decentralized ledger so it is like for example in a house it is like any transaction is happening with reference to buying something or like uh, getting some money instead of a person maintaining a ledger assume that there are four people in a house all the four people are also maintaining the ledger suppose if there is any transaction happens suppose if you are buying a grocery so instead of one person recording it 
and it is being recorded in the books of accounts of all the four people but here the information which is uh, which is coming in or the transactions is recorded and it is immutable cryptographic signature called the hash so it is nothing but it is the set of transactions which are encrypted and which are stored not in a single ledger but it is on a distributed ledger so that is what we call it as a blockchain so the transaction uh, different transactions are in the form of a block and which are chained together so what exactly it is going to do is so that no one can tamper with it because if we want to tamper you have to tamper with different ledgers different ledgers or different distributed systems so that is what exactly we call it as a blockchain and whenever we say blockchain the first thing comes to our mind is the bitcoin right so that is the first thing which comes to our mind bitcoin so because it has become very popular and it is a very popular implementation of a digital currency which we call it as bitcoin also nowadays people are also talking about what is called as the ethereum so these are the two things which are basically growing and uh, there is a lot of uh, buzz around this and people started using this and is the blockchain is limited to a bitcoin or like any other uh, digital currency is there anything something more than that so that's what we would be discussing hope you understood what exactly is a blockchain so whenever i say i said it is a distributed ledger whenever i say distributed ledger what are the what are the properties associated with a distributed ledger as the name indicates it should be distributed immutable so once the validated record you cannot change any, any information that is what is immutable and it is secure and it is programmable so the program which is inside a blockchain we call it as a smart contract which is a self running program so which is on the distributed network and anonymous in the sense that whenever the transaction happens so the the participants may agree and validate the transaction so that the information is stored in the different ledger and whenever any transaction happens the transaction is time stamped in the sense what time this particular transaction happens so all those things are there and also anonymous in the sense the identity of the participants in either is either anonymous or pseudo anonymous so these are the few things associated with what is called as a blockchain so uh actually if you go with the wikipedia definition of blockchain so that is what they say it is a decentralized distributed uh and often times public or digital ledger consisting of records called as the block so this is what is the definition of a blockchain and whenever we say blockchain along with that there are so many other terms co comes into mind other things comes into mind one is the infrastructure so if you want to run a blockchain what kind of infrastructure is required right and and also the from the hardware perspective and from the networking perspective and then consensus consensus in terms of agreeing for a particular transaction and the information in the form of a blocks and what kind of applications we can build on top of uh, the blockchain so one is the smart contracts is a program and we can develop something called as the decentralized application or dapps so this is what we call it as overall it is called as a blockchain so if i want to picturally represent a blockchain how a transaction happens is transaction is requested and authenticated and the block representing the transaction is created any transaction maybe someone is selling someone is buying any transaction is uh, represented in a form of a block and block is sent to every node which is participating uh, in that particular transaction so it every node of the network it is sent and those nodes validate the transaction 
and then nodes receive a reward for proof of work typically in the form of the cryptocurrency there is something called mining so there is a, assume like this is a very big network of computers which validate this transaction so why do they validate so the what oh, they have to put up a lot of infrastructure right for validating this transaction and because of their validating this they are keeping keep uh, keeping track of all the records so they should be rewarded so these people are called as the miners so once it is done then the block is added to the existing blockchain so existing transactions are there it is added and the update is distributed across the network so across the network the update is uh, distributed and the transaction is complete so this is what we call it as the transaction in a blockchain so there are so many things comes here into the picture one is the transaction second one is how do we represent the transaction or how do we store the transaction second one is the validating the transaction third one is mining the transactions and then the th the finally the transaction is completed so this is what exactly we call it as the transaction so it mostly there is a centralized and there is a decentralized so so far whatever the things we are using in terms of personal or in terms of official or government mostly it is centralized mostly we are concentrating working on the centralized application whereas this is a decentralized application now we have to see like what is the advantage of centralized application what is the de advantage of decentralized application why do we get into why do we need the blockchain and what are the different implementations of the blockchain right so what are the different plethora of applications are coming up in the blockchain only the main thing now so far whatever we are uh, talking about is the bitcoin because there is a a uh, lot of uh, what you can call it as uh, the transaction is happening in terms of the usage of the bitcoin or people are buying it and then there is a increase in terms of the uh, the value of the bitcoin so other than that so we can use it in internet of things we can use it in healthcare we can use it in keeping track of the government records right and then law enforcement the music the gaming now people are talking about metaverse okay the any financial institutions anywhere any transaction needs to happen in securely so that is where we can develop the application using the blockchain so there are a lot of implementations of the blockchain other than just the bitcoin right so if you look at it there are like just i was searching so there is 50 plus blockchain real world use cases uh, from different different segments be it government be it payment i mean of uh, insurance or like banking or like uh, um, what you can call it as the land records energy sector so many 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 use cases are coming up taxation okay and uh, many entertainment even entertainment so lot of uh, applications are coming up now even in the art we have something called nft so even in the art also it is coming up health care health record and many uh, use cases are coming up as far as the blockchain is concerned so you can look at this so there are plenty of applications which are coming up so just let me put it in the chart window okay so just okay so just the link i share so this is where a uh, lot of uh, applications are coming up yes metaverse someone is talking about the metaverse right so now let us let us quickly understand 
the evolution of the cryptocurrency is one of the uh, the top most implementation of uh, the blockchain let us understand how the this currency is evolved and how where we are as of now so if you look at it like once we go back it is all the barter system right there was no currency at that time if i am buying wheat and if i want to buy a, a pair of slippers so it is being exchanged that is what we started with the barter system and then came the gold coins so exchanging anything with the gold coins that is what is this thing so what is the problem with each one of them so here uh, the first one is finding the exact match second one is carrying the gold so at this point in time it's very small but earlier it used to be a, a big log of gold or something like that and then comes the currency based on the gold so earlier government used to put the currency in the i mean the gold in the gold in somewhere they will deposit the gold when they want to uh, print the equivalent amount right equivalent amount they wanted to print so this is what they used to do so they they will be putting that much uh, gold deposit and then equivalently they are printing the currency so then what happened then once uh, then they fixed us currency us uh, i mean the usd as the fixed rate and they started uh, evaluating with reference to the usd so that is what started from 18, 1942 to 1970 so then what happened then because of the world war so this thing stopped what is stopped is like uh, uh, so no government is now have the option to print any number of currency it is nothing related to the gold they want to deposit or they want to keep it so the government is now has the there is no control on in terms of printing the money so a government may decide to print as much money as possible so that will lead to hyperinflation because if you have many currents many many notes coming in so then it it got into like hyperinflation that's what government want to um, regulate the things and then they have come with the demonetization and all those things that means now the currency whatever we are having it is controlled by the central government uh, or it is controlled by different governments across the world and so they they can they can at any time they can change the policy so that the money whatever we have the valuation may go up or come down so that means we are at the mercy of the government so that is what is happening so in order to do that because it's all centralized someone is controlling someone is managing that so finally it's my money why someone has to control someone has to manage that is where the concept of bitcoin comes into picture this is a cryptocurrency comes into picture and with the number of this is a digital currency right this is a digital currency it came in 2009 the person who has come up with this or the set of people who come up with this they have capped they have capped the uh, tokens of 21 million so there could not be more than more uh, token of the bitcoin more than 21 billion so this is what they have capped so then people started uh, uh, started using the bitcoin probably initially they released uh, only a few of the bitcoin and the people started trading it people started uh, buying and then keeping it and suddenly there is a lot of demand a lot of demand for this thing suppose if any anything is scarce then obviously there is a demand for that right so that is where they they cap the limit to 21 million so people started buying that thing so then uh, suddenly uh, there is a lot of investors coming in a lot of people started using this and slowly there is an increase in terms of the uh, the valuation of the bitcoin so these are the key attributes of a cryptocurrency one is the scarcity divisibility what is the meaning of divisibility you can buy 0.1 cryptocurrency also it is not one cryptocurrency you have to buy one itself is some 32 lakhs also so 0.1 cryptocurrency you can buy 0.15 cryptocurrency you can buy that is called as the divisibility fungibility means you can do the exchange with some other thing transportability because it is digital durability in the sense it is stored in a blockchain and then counterfeitability that means no one can reproduce the same currency right uh, whatever is there so these are the key attributes of the cryptocurrency so if you look at why people are going when why people want to buy still there is a, a lot of things happening across the world 
so the government wants to come up regulate this but still people are investing money in this because traditionally where we invest you invest the money either in stock exchange or you invest the money in the gold or land so you you compare like in last 7 years that is 2014 to 2017 the sensex has given you a overall 11% uh, returns gold has given you a return of around 4 4 to 5% return and whereas the cryptocurrency the bitcoin has given a return of around uh, 96% right so that is where the let is a lot of buzz and people wants to get into it understand this they want to develop this they want to do many applications based on this so one is the limited uh, currency is available and then you can buy bits and pieces and people started using it and uh, so initially like a lot of techno technologists uh, started um, uh, showing a lot of interest and uh, Uh, suppose i want to buy a, buy some kind of any kind of a goods at uh, some time it was possible to exchange with the bitcoins or you can buy it with the bitcoins so you saw like tesla right tesla guy so elon musk he tweeted something and suddenly uh, the the currency uh, or the that particular valuation has increased right so that is where a lot of things are happening so at this point in time the lot of the return on the investment is mainly from the cryptocurrency and if i want to take you a simple example if i want to give you a simple example how a blockchain work so let us understand this what is called as the kitty party so suppose a kitty party hosted by um, some people set of people there are around say 50 people and what they decided is like every month so everyone will be contributing one bitcoin or one currency one rupee or whatever it is so there will be a lucky draw at the end of the month and whoever gets that particular lucky draw so uh, suppose uh, there are around 50 people and everyone will contribute two units of uh, currency and then there is a lucky draw winner and they, they are going to get 100 rupees suppose uh, this is how the kitty party they wanted to organize or they wanted to do so earlier they decided let one person manage this account means who has whether they have contributed in that month 2 rupees or 2 bitcoin or whatever it is whether they have contributed someone has to manage the record right so that is where one person uh, they nominated and that person used to uh, used to keep the record so it is a record or a ledger they used to keep so but later on it was decided oh uh, so it is like a centralized only one person is going to do that so then maybe people are like okay no uh, they may not manage this properly so it is under the control of them then they decided okay instead of one person keeping the record they selected some people some set of people like around 20 people they started managing the record so they people uh, managing this is what is decentralized right so instead of one person managing it it is around 20 person started managing the record that means whenever any person hands over the money to two units so then it is not one person who is going to record it it is being recorded by so many people right around 20 people are going to record this so any transaction between uh, uh, this thing this is how it is happening this is a decentralized so if you replace this women with the system this is what is a decentralized system this is what is a decentralized system and if any transaction happens that is what is the proof of work so that should be recorded that should be recorded by not only one person and most of the people has to agree validate that okay this particular transaction has happened then only that transaction get into the blockchain so that if someone has to wants to influence if someone has to influence saying that this particular transaction suppose if someone instead of giving two units of money they try to give one units of money and then this they ask the person to update the record as two units of money then what is going to happen is like then you can influence one person but you have to influence all other people right so that is what difficult to do that so once this particular transaction is done then it is uh, approved agreed then it is uh, put it into a block and there is a Uh, the let the chain of blocks which will go uh, and then it is imp- if you want to fudge this you have to fudge all those transaction and and these particular systems are not in only one place it is spread over all over the world 
So if you if you look at the reality, if you look at the reality, let look at this system. These are the decentralized system. Where are these decentralized system? It may be somewhere in the US, somewhere in Japan, somewhere in South Korea, somewhere in some other places, maybe in India. And people who have invested a lot of money in managing these things. So the managing this transaction and it is it is big, big data centers they have set up, right? To manage all those things. So it is difficult to uh, fudge that particular transaction. So this is what exactly the concept of what is called as the blockchain. So when when most of the uh, people involved in that, most of the network involved in that, if they say this transaction is proper, then it gets into the blockchain and then it is added to the ledger. So this is how it works. So five elements for creating a blockchain is peer-to-peer -peer network, cryptography, consensus algorithm, punishment reward, market adoption right so these are the few things now the question is what exactly is the architecture of the blockchain architecture of the blockchain if you if you put all of them together so you can get the architecture of the blockchain so there are many people like clients they use a blockchain network so for doing any transaction and so there are different layers like in any application like you have different layers right here also there is an application layer there is no actually database layer that is what typically we use in any application software there is a database layer so that is not there but that is being replaced by the blockchain right and so there is a transaction happens and the programs which runs in this network in these blocks or the in this network uh, programs which runs we call it as smart contracts. So they are the program which are running on this particular network. So so once you once you once you write it and run it, it is not it, it belongs to everyone. So it is being run forever, and there is no problem as such. Someone will have the control and things like that. Okay, so that is what is the smart contract. And then transaction, consensus, replication, hashing. So these are these are the things, and then you want to build an application you want to build an application on top of the blockchain then you can use any of these things like right? rest api rps rpc or the web api so where you want to build on top of this so anybody can have the access anybody can have the access to this particular smart contract and we can develop an application on top of it right so this is what uh, is typically this thing. And then network participants or nodes, we are called as the miners. So if I want to develop a smart contract and if I want to deploy it, then we have to give some money, right? So that money in the form of the currency. So based on the digital currency, based on whichever digital currency you want to use. And the people who are managing these transactions, so they should also be paid, right? So that is where the concept of miners comes into picture so these are the lot of uh, people who who work as a miners so they set up huge huge network huge huge systems and uh, they do all these particular transactions so this is what is the typical architecture of the blockchain right so uh, we have node we have consensus we have transactions we have miners and then we have blocks right so this is the first part of the uh, what you can call it as the uh, introduction to blockchain and what are the things uh, uh, what exactly is a blockchain and how a transaction happens in a blockchain and uh, uh, why people uh, when I say blockchain why people are people want to invest in these cryptocurrencies um, these are the few things uh, which I spoke about so let me pass for a minute and then see any questions are there then I will continue with the second part Okay, so people are talking about the NFT, yes. So there are a lot of things. Okay, so some people are saying streaming is good. Maybe you have to check the network. At least I have not. Yeah, so difference between NFT, Web3, Metaverse and all. So 
we will talk about all those things okay fine sure so let me continue let me take up the second part of it So the next part, like when people are want to develop the applications and uh, use it, one is the, the one which we are talking about quite often is the Bitcoin. So there are other than other uh, currencies, other digital currency. So Ether is one of the digital currency and the entire ecosystem, we call it as Ethereum. So Ether is a digital currency and Ethereum is an ecosystem. So where we can develop, we can build and we can deploy the smart contracts. So this is what is called as the Ethereum. So in this, I will introduce you to what is Ethereum and what are the dApps, what is a smart contract and then which is the programming language quite often used for developing a uh, small contract which is called as the solidity and what are the learning path so what are the learning path and then what are the sample blockchain use cases and then what are the software required uh, to be set up or installed in this see now uh, we were just talking about the cryptocurrency other than the cryptocurrency there are a lot of applications that can be built on top of the blockchain so for that the quite prominent system ecosystem is nothing but the ethereum so ethereum is a decentralized open source blockchain with smart contract functionality it is an open source it is a blockchain system and it has a smart contract functionality where you can write the smart contract and you can deploy the smart contract on the ethereum virtual machine so the currency uh, used by the system like with this ethereum is called as the ether is a na native cryptocurrency of the platform so there are different cryptocurrencies and most probably this is second after the bitcoin in terms of the market capitalization now there are so many other things came into picture so it was conceived in 2013 by a programmer, Vitalik Vittori. Okay, this is a person who has come up with this particular thing called as the Ethereum. So whenever we say uh, people are developing the application on uh, in the blockchain, probably they refer to the Ethereum most of the time. So when we say traditional web app, web app development, so this is what we do, right? So we we use the uh, web browser and from the browser so user accesses the application and then um, then we contact any of the backend programming um, depending on what programming language we will be using and then we are storing the information in a database and uh, probably this infrastructure is moved to the cloud and we are accessing it so this is what traditionally we do whenever we say we are uh, when we develop any web application right so when it comes to the decentralized app developing a decentralized this is mostly the centralized application so the one which i am talking about is the centralized application where i can access the application from anywhere and maybe the central uh, server centralized system where i am going to get the information from the centralized system so whereas there is something called decentralized applications we call it as dApps is an application built on the decentralized network that combines a smart contract and a front-end user interface so there also there will be a front-end user interface is that okay but here we we are putting this application the back-end application and everything on the decentralized network uh, which uses a smart contract which is nothing but a program which is run on the um, run on this decentralized network 
So here we are using Ethereum and the smart contracts are accessible using the APIs. So using the APIs, we can access the smart contracts. And most of the times, the smart contract um, uh, are mostly written using a programming language called as Solidity. Okay, so that has its backend code running on the decentralized peer-to-peer -peer network, contrast to the uh, where we are using running it on a centralized servers. So this is what is the thing when when you come across when you start working on this. Okay, so this is de decentralized, deterministic, and then isolated. So this is where we will be using what is called as the Ethereum virtual machine. And we will be once you have run and once you deployed it, it's it's you cannot do anything on that. So that that can be accessed and somebody some people can develop an application on top of this uh, your smart contract and they can use it, right? So this is what is typically a uh, de Ethereum uh, decentralized application. So the Ethereum blockchain is there, and how can you access this? So that is where Web3 comes into picture. So the Web3, so we we come across like uh, the different uh, things happening. The first we come up with the internet and then the web, then we have uh, what you can call it as the internet of things. And now we have something called as the Web3. So which helps us in interfacing with the blockchain and for information exchange, we will be using what is called as the Web3. So when we Web3 is available uh, in different programming language, I mean, web implementation of that is there in different programming languages. If you are good in uh, JavaScript, there is a JavaScript implementation, there is a Python implementation. So like this, different implementations of the Web3 is available. So Web3, uh, using the Web3, what you can do is you can talk to the blockchain, you can talk to the contract, and then you can uh, interface with them, and then there is an information exchange is happening. So the, the new things, what we, what it comes is like the Web3, that is the one thing. And uh, most of the time, typically, uh, when we are developing a layer on top of it, I mean, when we are developing a front end, then probably you will be developing a front end application using either Angular or React. Nowadays, uh, most of the times, uh, many uh, people are using the React for the front end development. So from the application perspective, as an application developer or, or an architect or anything like that, so we need to understand the how this decentralized application can be developed. So one is called as the smart contract. And second is like, how do we deploying it on a native blockchain network? Or maybe once it is done and once it is uh, tested, then we can do it on a test network. And then finally, we will release to the either Ethereum or whichever the one which you want to use. And then you can use it. And then accessing it from the front end. So this is what typically we would be using when we say uh, Ethereum uh, application development or decentralized application development. So here there are a few, uh, few uh, pros and cons, zero downtime, privacy, resistance to censorship, complete data integrity, trustless computer computation and verification behavior. These are the few things. On the downside, what is the downside? So here, in order to run these applications, and it is not like uh, typically fast like our centralized application, it is a decentralized application where the transaction has to be validated, verified by different participating uh, nodes or participating networks, so it's very slow. So you cannot do like, uh, maybe it may take some time or maybe it may not be possible like when you are going for any transaction, suppose you go to a shop, shop and you buy something and you immediately want to pay using this, so it may be difficult because it takes some time, not like the way we do the regular, uh, what you can call it as the transaction. The second is the so much power is required, so much electricity is required, right, for so for running this big, I mean, infrastructure. Again, it may be, you know, so as the transaction grows, so really difficult uh, in terms of the power consumption and, and it, it may have effect on the entire world from the perspective of the source of the power. So that is again a challenge, right? So uh, network congestion sometimes um, that is also a big problem. 
so um, performance overhead so these are the few of the issues still uh, the people are working on try to uh, solve this kind of a thing right so this is what uh, typically there is a pros and cons and coming to the smart contract what is a smart contract it is a simply a program that runs on the ethereum blockchain it's a collection of code like any programming language like you may people are aware of many programming language right it's same to the same as those programming languages but with some additional uh, functionality additional keywords or additional things uh, which are specifically uh, from the blockchain perspective so this is what is called as the smart contract and uh, uh, th this is smart contract is a type of the ethereum account and then you can uh, use the smart contract where you can define the rules and the regulation and then it it automatically runs and uh, and then it manages uh, based on whatever you have written right so mostly most of the time the programming uh, program the what they use is a solidity solidity is the programming language and this is object oriented programming language and uh, it supports many of the object oriented things so if you want to learn solidity quickly there is an online editor is there which is called as the remix remix online editor is there and also tutorial points has uh, some of the uh, sample examples and it's available even solidity has its own uh, website so this is where we can uh, start typing some of the program and then we can run and execute it okay so this is uh, what is the uh, this remix so this is where we can write the program not very hard like if you already know some uh, i mean if you have used any of the programming language learning is not uh, much hard so again if you want to learn this solidity again it starts with the basic of programming language like data type and then uh, all those operators and all all the stuff okay all those stuff and then loops uh, everything is there and uh, how to uh, install this if you want to install separately or if you want to use it the quick way to run it is uh, using the online um, editor which is a remix using the remix so what you can do is you can so this is what So it is called as the remix ethereum or so you can even run it and you can deploy it on a local blockchain uh, using the the remix this is the ide okay this is the ide if you want to look at like how a contract looks like okay if i expand this see there are some simple contracts suppose a my contract dot sol sol is nothing but the cell solidity extension so again like um, it is um, like any other programming language so you have uh, pragma solidity solidity version the contract this is like you have a class uh, in java or class in c++ program here it is called as the contract so my contract string value and then this is a constructor getter setter so those kind of things are there okay that is what you can use it so if you want to like run these programs again here you can compile and run so solidity has the compiler where you can compile this thing and if you want to run it so you can run this okay so this is the environment javascript virtual environment c++ 
so i can deploy the contract so here we have something so when you want to deploy it uses gas gas is nothing but like the, the you have to make some kind of a payment uh, for this so when i deploy so this gets deployed on this particular virtual environment and then yeah so you can see the deployed contract and we can do some kind of a transactions here i mean some kind of value we can set here there is something called setter and getter i can set a value suppose a value testing something like this here only you can do and then get when i say set and then get so i can get at those kind of a thing so this is what we call it as a solidity programming language and then this solidity programming language has um like any regular programming language it has uh, so many things like structures we can create a structure we can create a structure like uh, the c programming way we do and we can write a functions we can buy tokens so uh, buy tokens in this, sense, this is a program so which we would be writing the program in this way so i know like who is the person who is uh, the sender or who is the buyer who is the seller so those kind of things we can do like there is this message with that we can track this so this is what is the uh, the solidity programming language so where we can use uh, this online editor and then we can do this so there is something called marketplace so this is what uh, the one uh, use case i would be doing say one person uh, creates a product and he wants to sell the product and someone wants to buy the product so and also there are some events so when a product is coming created then we can say this product is event is create i mean product is created and it could be notified so this is what uh, typically uh, we will be using when we say when i want to write it so it is like regular programming language only with the logic but using the solidity as the programming language and there are few things specific to the solidity so it is like creating a product when someone buys i have to deduct the money from uh, that particular person account and then credit it to the seller right so those kind of uh, things uh, we would be doing uh, and then this is the uh, what you can call it as the emitting the uh, emitting this particular uh, the transaction i mean emitting emitting this particular event saying that this particular event has happened so this is what we will be writing purchasing a product or selling a product so this is what is the uh, transactions uh, this is what is we call it as a smart contract so we can deploy the smart contract and then we can test this so this is a brief introduction about uh, the what are the things uh, to get started with so solidity is one of the programming language and other than that people are talking about like there are other applications right so nowadays uh, there is a cryptocurrency uh, platform uh, which is very quite famous in india called wasirex so this is where uh, you can do the wasirex and actually uh, the ceo of this company he was uh, one of my team members in my previous company so when i was was working he joined my company our company as a fresher and then he went on building a very big uh, platform in the india and even um, buyance has actually invested a lot of money into it so this is one of the if you want to just go and look into it because they they are also uh, created so many videos in terms of uh, how do we use this right so there is something called wasirex uh we cannot see i have shared everything uh you people are able to see this and here also nft is there where you can uh, like any art kind of a thing you want to sell uh then there is something called nft and this is 
uh, as I said, uh, the CEO of this company, he apparently worked with us. Okay, so this is called as the Wazirex and uh, um, this they they actually you can do a lot of things and they have built the people are building a so building a application on top of the the existing smart contract people are giving a loan so that you can buy uh, you can use that loan to buy the thing now like every day uh, the way the trading and trading is happening right every day the trading is happening in the same way uh, in the stock exchange same kind of a trading is also happening uh, in this okay so that is where uh, we would be using this uh, i think deep narayan may be problem for you other people are able to hear oh, i think so uh, there is no issue for them right so this is one part of the things which is called as the solidity what is the learning part Suppose you want to become a blockchain developer or you want to get into architecting or whatever the role you are in uh, in this. So this is what is the typical learning path. One is understand the concept of what is blockchain, what is the architecture and learn programming language like Solidity. Learn and the usage of Web3, Web3 API that is like see uh, the way we use payment gateway API or any kind of a API we use right similarly you can use the Web3 API and depending on what what programming language you are already into it so there are Web APIs available in those programming language then probably you want to get into the front end you want to be a full stack uh, what you can call as a blockchain developer then you can also be or you can limit yourself to from the back end only or if you want to be full stack uh, uh, front end developer then you can start uh, using like react or any other front end technology and uh, you have to test right test this thing when you when you learn develop this and you want to test it there are some tools like ganache and also there is a development environment which is called as the truffle truffle is one of the development environment ganache is where the local blockchain where you can test it out and then you can deploy it so these are the few things uh, so we want to get into so when we start um, learning the blockchain so just uh, maybe i may take few more minutes um, and then show one of the sample application before we wind up so this is the typical learning part say and again these things uh, run on the node.js so these are the prerequisites see node.js uh, where you can download and install it and then Ganache is the personal blockchain how it will look like personal blockchain so this is how it will look like suppose if I open the Ganache so this they had given some uh, 10 accounts free where you can we can work on these accounts and any block any transactions uh, any transactions see these are the 10 accounts see these are the ether ether is the balance which is available here and the blocks any transaction happens those transactions is recorded here right and the contracts which are the contracts deployed see i have deployed a contract called as marketplace so i have also done the migration and i have deployed a contract called uh, marketplace so this is what uh, is a personal blockchain or a local blockchain where you can explore and experiment so this is called ganache and uh, you can download it from the truffle there is a truffle is a uh, environment so you can actually go to the truffle and then you can download this yes it is being recorded uh, it would be put on to the skill upright website see truffle shoot this is the one So we can we can actually download what is called as Ganache and then when we when we use it and then when we start doing the transaction see this is download Ganache you can download this thing so this is one click blockchain this is what truffle is a suite of suite of tools where we can start working on developing the any applications we call it as the dApps 
and how do we install it actually so first is we have to install what is called as the node.js then ganache and then we want to install the truffle it is npm install and there is one more thing called as the metamux which is a chrome extension because w3 if you want to use i mean if you want to do any this kind of transaction there is something called metamask so metamask is a google chrome extension how it would look like it would look like something like this this is the fox so this is what is called as a metamask Okay, so this is the MetaMask where we can, using this, we can connect to our local uh, blockchain network and we can, when we develop an application and we wanted to do some kind of a transactions, we can use it. So we can, uh, we can create some accounts and then uh, we can do the transactions. So uh, there are few things uh, we need to learn from the blockchain perspective. So if you look at this application, just to show the demonstration, this is an application which is built on top of, I mean, built using React. And uh, this is just a marketplace where I'm going to add some product. And then the product, when we add this particular product, and then the product is listed and someone else can buy this particular product. So this looks like a regular any application, but this is developed using the front end React and then the smart contract and the smart contract is already deployed and a person with uh, like who is a seller. Uh, so this is a buyer and uh, the seller seller actually can sell and list it and the buyer can buy this. And this is just the account number or like the, uh, the account number. So this is the account number like this we can do this particular transaction so where there is a suppose if i want to buy this say it opens up a metamask notification and here i can confirm the transaction okay so this is one and then i can say confirm so once i confirm this particular transaction then we can see this particular product is bought already see here it it won't show that it is you can actually again buy it so this kind of things this is just to show you a sample this is what we can do and uh, probably just a few more minutes i will take and if you look at the code this is what is the code this is what is the uh, the, the code which is developed and again, here you have package.json, those who start working on the Node.js or anything. And these are the various libraries uh, which we would be using here. We are using Web3. We are using the Web3. And uh, this is what is the smart contract. If you look at a smart contract, see, this is a smart contract. So which already showed so it basically we have written like some purchase a product or like create a product and when someone purchases we have to transfer the ownership from this guy to that guy and then we have to deduct uh, some uh, the amount and then credit to something so it is like your regular banking transaction whatever we do and but we would be using suppose if i want to write the test script i can do it so this is what is the test script where we will be using the web3 suppose I, if i want to see if you want to access and then you can write uh, the the test scripts uh, so suppose i want to get the market plus name and then i can create a product see i can create a product like this using the web3 i can create a product this is the sample product and then you can you can check the product count and then you want to uh, check whether this product creation is successful or not you can do the unit testing also okay uh, so here it involves three things one is the the front end and the front end we are using here the react we are using the react uh, and then we will be using different components you can create different components and then it is going to say this is the web3 
so new web3 and web3 with the, using the web3 you can access uh, those contract and then you can do a transaction using the web3 right so these are the few things uh, which uh, is not very hard but at the same time we have to learn something new uh, in order to uh, uh, update ourselves to the blockchain environment and coming back like uh, uh, there are a uh, lot of uh, uh, learnings here and a lot of use cases uh, nowadays uh, nfts we are talking about or like people are talking about the metaverse which is a uh, virtual environment uh, so going forward that's why facebook itself has changed the company name uh, change they have changed the company name and uh, a lot of things virtual reality is being added uh, so many things are happening gaming and uh, like people with their dreams they want to live in the virtual world they can do it so a lot of applications are coming up so from the from the business perspective uh, so this car like a lot of insurance companies bfsi and all those things healthcare even the government like land records they want to keep the land records proper maybe the academic records degree certificates so those kind of things which we want to um, uh, which we want to keep it safeguard it and use it so there are a lot of applications coming up and this is where a lot of people are showing interest and they say a um, lot of traction is there in this particular part so just this uh, particular webinar is just to introduce you to you know, what is a blockchain there are different applications of the blockchain what is the ecosystem of a blockchain what are the things you need to learn when you want to get into the blockchain and there are different uh, what you can call it as uh, materials are available i found there is something called dap university which is really good and uh, i think unfortunately today their website is down i believe when i checked it lost there is something called dap university and uh, this is exclusively they are using let me see whether it comes up or not okay this is down but still i put that in the chat window okay so this is the chart window i put it so this is where you can find a lot of things but um, not much material is available so not much material is available still because it is uh, uh, it is just the starting of uh, uh, the blockchain but people already many people are using it and many people are showing the interest maybe it may be the right time for you if you want to uh, get into the the bogey of the blockchain and then uh we look into this particular opportunity which comes up but there is a quite a lot of opportunity which is there okay so with that um, uh, let me uh let me conclude this session and uh, thank you all for joining this session hope uh, this was useful for you at least this this is just a beginning okay so in the days to come so uh, we can uh, we can do some more webinar on this appreciate your uh, uh, feedback if any okay few people are saying there is no issues for them few people are having something so this recorded session will be there so recorded uh, session recorded things will be put into the uh, skill up right website so definitely you will be getting it so you can watch in the skill of upright website in the webinar session yes metaverse is the virtual world yes right So how could you suggest to invest? Okay, uh, so new ca comer to the crypto world. Are you talking from the financial perspective or are you talking from the learning perspective? There are two things. One is the learning perspective. Another one is the what you can call it as the uh, actually doing any transactions. So as far as the regulation is concerned, there is no. They are not limiting you not to do anything, but it is still not a regulated world. 
but uh, people are still investing and they are making the money as far as the technical front is concerned if you want to learn the technology and if you want to get into that and I, that is the right time you can do that yes so gas fees is required and then this is uh, free right so like when you use the remix uh, it comes like there are some uh, uh, initially they had given you some free accounts which you can use it okay so you can use that free accounts which is there when you are using the remix that would be good enough for you to do any uh, poc kind of a thing yes yes gas fee is required Okay. At least hope uh, this was useful for you to get uh, the interest or traction in terms of the um, usage of what is called as, I mean, in, in terms of uh, the blockchain. Okay, thank you very much. If you have any other comment or anything to say, you can do that. So could you please say the materials use sample code and all? I think we the the we would be uh, we would be sharing the video. Okay, so that's what we were doing. The video will come up in the uh, Skill Upright website. No, how can uh, the same product be listed to someone else? No, once it is bought, then done. Okay, then then you can. Uh, uh, the thing is, uh, he cannot actually. Uh, I mean, you cannot sell it to someone else. So in that case, you have to uh, list a new item and then they have to use it. So this is quite uh, different than the regular e-commerce things we use. <clears throat> yeah, can I access the DAP? Yeah, you can do that. It's down now. Okay, uh, it is down now. I think uh, if it is working, you can access it. It was down for some time, you can access it. Okay, guys, um, so thanks for attending today's session. Okay, website is working. Yeah, you can use it. Okay, thanks, Eman. Thanks, Sayaduma. Okay, thanks. So let me close this session.
ओके थैंक यू वेरी मच Kidam, Turkey. Huh?